pop star Adam Ant swept the nation back in the 80s with his uh, unique brand of music and his own very special style. He took a break from the British pop scene and he settled in the States, but he's home to roost now with a brand new look and a top 20 hit. Although, I mean, brand new look, it's, it's different, but it's still got the same flamboyance. I mean, you're still not going to be ordinary, are you? Um... I, no, I just made it. I mean, it's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a Vivian Westwood jacket, and I just decorated it. Really? You, really? Did, oh, you really did? I thought you were kidding. Yeah, I collect stuff from, you know, these, these things are from the, the Vatican, these little prayer things here. Whose? These are from, um, these are pieces of eight, and these are from Mexico. I went to Mexico. And uh, I thought about it for quite a time, and then just did it. And I just did it with a telephone book, a hammer, and a, one of those Swiss Army knives. I just oh. hammered the studs in. Really? Really? It looks good. Well, looks good. Well, you've done I did well. that with all the early stuff as well. So. You sort of more or less designed them yourself and, and made them yourself? Yeah, I think it's, it's always, I always have the clothes made, but it's nice to put that personal touch in. To mm. design it yourself, yeah. 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 What, listen, what happened to you? What happened to you? Because it was enormous, you know, people were chasing you everywhere you went around the country, mm -hmm. and then you, fap, you were gone. Yeah. Um, I just decided that, uh, I think it's better you make your own decisions, and it's always a difficult thing to do, but to walk away from a certain degree of success and do something you want to do. Mm. And I'd really wanted to act for a number of years. And when I did a play in Manchester, entertaining Mr. Mr. Sloan, Mr. Yeah. I enjoyed it, but I realised one very important thing, which was it was much harder than I thought it would be. Mm. Um, and, that it ha and that being a musician was something completely separate. So when the work started to be offered me in the States... Acting work? Yeah, I mm. had to go and do it, and I did it. And uh, so I've just been learning the, learning the craft, and it'll take me... It'll take a lot longer for me to feel as comfortable in acting as I do in music. Mm -hmm. In music, you know, I can, I could do anything. Literally. So why, so why the musical comeback then? Why are you? Well, it was never really a. Box? It's never really a sort of comeback. It was just that I had uh, major decisions to make. I changed record companies. I changed management company. I centred the business in LA, and that 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 alone took two years. And then the record took two years. So that mm. it was a long period, and I just kept saying to myself. What is important is it doesn't really matter how long you're away as long as you come back with the goods. Yeah. And mm. the fact that you know, people have bought the record is immensely um, you know, flattering and, and I'm really pleased with it. Pleased with it. But um, it's going to be a long job to literally just get back in. The most important thing is to put the records out. Mm. That's the most important thing. Absolutely. But what, I mean, the acting, I mean, you, you took it very seriously, um, I remember, and, and presumably still do. I mean, is it that you really felt that concentrating on music you weren't being taken seriously enough um, no it's not a case of seriousness I think uh, it was the reverse situation with acting when I first went to Hollywood you know I got a guy called Adam Ant they can have a guy called Adam Ant who can appeal to a pop audience or they can have a rather trained actor yeah. and um, so I got all my roles from reading against other actors and just didn't go in with any sort of phlegm but I didn't jump through windows and say hi I'm here <laughs> yeah. your worries are all you know and that's what I think people expect you to do um, I didn't play any roles that involved singing and it was a bit of a challenge but at the end of the day the only way you can get taken seriously in that community is to do the work and that's all I want to do. Yeah. Right. We've got this horoscope for I believe this stuff, so it better be good. You, well, you, you were saying earlier that your mother's a, a Romney. Yeah, my mum's a... My grandfather was born in a caravan in Oxford in 1898. And uh, I'm very superstitious. Oh, well, here we go then. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's a good one for you. Our This Morning astrologer, Lim Birkbeck, has cast your horoscope for this, for this comeback that you're making this year. Mm. He says you have a large hunk of Scorpio in your chart and you're both revealing something and concealing something all at the same time, which is all wrapped up in a sexual and mysterious package, which has an impact that is more powerful than you could probably possibly be aware of. Mm. But he goes on to say that 1990 will be a good year for you. Um, success and renewed acclaim will go with it, coming to a peak at the end of the year, but there could be a problem in 91. Yeah, he says in 1991, sorry, you can, you can chip in in a minute, <laughs> he says in 1991, he says that uh, you're going to have to ask yourself the question, who's the star and who's the person behind the starry image? You know, the old Marilyn Monroe syndrome, mm -hmm. he describes it as. Yeah, what do you think? Uh... Did you do that before at all? Did you? Because he says he actually predicts that you might, he could see you in 1991 or, or later in the 90s, mm -hmm. retiring again and sort of delving, doing a bit of the old soul searching. I think I've done a lot of soul searching in the last four years, really. Um, when I first went to LA, you know, I, I couldn't drive a car. I learned to drive. I drove around Mexico for like three months just to get myself together. I think I've actually done a certain degree of that. I, see, I do believe in this thing. Mm. Mm. I had my. Ta I had my a uh, tarot done by an Italian speaking a lady in Rome once who couldn't speak any English at all and she did my tarot and it was all translated into English and mm. most of it came true. Really? Mm. Yeah. I mean I think you, I have a respect for all that kind of thing. 
It's, it's going to be a good year for you. He says that May is a particularly good time for any launches or releases, but you will reach a peak by the end of the year. So well, that's when my album comes out. So. In yeah. May? Really? Um, it's sort of March, April, around about that time. Oh, delay it till May, I Delay it till May, yes. Go with the same. Last thing, last thing. He says that you're the kind of person who's always trying to seek out their deepest desires, and nothing superficial will prevent you from getting to what you want to be. Is that is that you? Yeah, I mean, Delving I'm very, deep. I'm very, I mean, Scorpio is the sort of sign that's, you know, I, I got a very good memory for things, and um, once I make my mind up to do something, then I, I, I sort of, it comes to, you, you either take no for an answer, or you just keep going around it. I think if you can do that without hurting others, you should do that, mm -hmm. and I do that. So are you, I mean, are you now permanently rebased in England? Have you still got somewhere in LA or what? I've got a home in LA and one in London. Um, I mean, I think LA is looked upon as this big, you know, people going out to parties and stuff, but it's actually not like that. It's a working town. People get to work early, go to bed early. Mm. And Do you it like it? Me. Do you like it out there? I prefer England. Do you? Um, I'd never go somewhere just to sort of, for any other reason than work. But, you know, I come back to London and it's, I'm, like a, I'm like a tourist now. I really, I, I find myself going around these museums that I'd never have bothered with if I hadn't have gone to America. Yes. You get well, better weather over there anyway. Well, it's, it's a bit sort of like Moby Dick out there this morning, <laughs> waiting, isn't it? The, waiting for the whale to come up and Captain Ahab. Like, <laughs> That's later. That's later about. on the weather map. Listen, you must be doing something right. This guy's 35, he looks about 25. Incredible, incredible. Anyway.